Believe it or not, light pollution filters, like this one, are increasingly a controversial topic among astrophotographers, with some claiming they are a complete waste of money and others saying they wouldn't leave the house without one. Instead of just injecting yet another opinion into the foray, I thought it would be better to do an exhaustive review of four popular light pollution filters under different sky conditions and with different kinds of cameras and share all of my test results. And that way you can decide for yourself whether or not a light pollution filter would be worth a purchase. Hello, my name is Nico Carver and my main website is nebulaphotos.com. Today I am also announcing a new website to go with this video, which is astrofilters.com, where I will just be uh, releasing test results and reviews of astronomical filters. The link is in the description, of course, if you wanna check it out. This video was suggested and paid for by my patrons over on Patreon. If you wanna join us, it starts at just $1 per month. So the purpose of this video, again, is to do in-depth reviews of four filters. We have the Optolong L Pro, the Astronomic CLS, the SV Boney CLS, and the Bader Neodymium. And I'll be testing them with various instruments, including a spectrophotometer, a small telescope, and an unmodified DSLR, and finally, a dedicated astronomy camera. And my goal with doing all of these tests is to give you information needed to make up your own mind about using these kinds of filters and to pick one out. Uh, a few notes, all my real world testing was done with a telescope on an equatorial mount with these cameras attached to it. I don't recommend buying a filter for uh, what we call untracked astrophotography, meaning astrophotography on a fixed tripod. And you can find my reasoning for that in my video simply titled Filters for Deep Sky Astrophotography. Of course, the link is in the description. Before we jump into the tests, one more thing. Since this is my first full review on the channel, I just wanna let you know that I am also publishing a review policy on my websites and also as a video. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. And part of that policy is to disclose where I got everything for my reviews. So let's do that for this video. I purchased all of these filters for this review, as well as the equipment needed to make the spectrophotometer using proceeds from my Patreon. The Canon 5D Mark III, the telescope and the mount were things I already owned. And the QHY 168C is on long-term loan from QHY directly. So next up, we have the tests. I do use the chapters feature for the YouTube timeline. So if you ever wanna skip ahead, please feel free. So part of the reason this review ended up taking so long is because I got into my head that I wanted to verify the spectral transmission of all the filters that I was reviewing, which uh, took a long time to get that process sorted out with all the equipment that I needed. But I did figure it out and I'll just explain the process that I use uh, quickly here. I start by calibrating my spectrometer and the software using a neon bulb because neon has very distinct spectral emission lines. So it's easy to calibrate against those because we know exactly where those should fall along the spectrum. I then use a quartz tungsten halogen bulb from Thor Labs uh, to shine light through the different filters and understand uh, where they're notching out uh, different parts of the visible spectrum. Um, this little photometer attachment is something I put together and then the light goes through a fiber optic cable into the spectrometer and uh, then in, through a USB cable out to the computer where I'm using Theramino software to analyze the spectrum of the different filters. And here are the results. So this is the Optolong L Pro's published transmission curve. And then this filled in area is what I discovered. And one note here before we go on to the next one, because of the, the uh, way that a tungsten halogen bulb emits light, it's not very sensitive in the, the blues, especially the deep blues. So I'm only confident in my curve um, from about, 450 uh, nanometers up. Um, so I just cut it off at that point, anything below that, because uh, it just wasn't reliable data. But anything above that looked quite reliable. And so I am confident um, in 
my results. But keep in mind that this these are my particular filters that I'm testing. So I'm really just testing um, the published results that these companies put out versus my particular filters. Your particular filters might be different, but this sort of is a, is a quality uh, check on the filters uh, to see how closely they um, align with what has been published. And for the most part, they did very well. So anyways, here's the Optolong L Pro uh, versus what mine showed. And the real only the only real note here is that they didn't um, publish that there is a little uh, bump of IR around 800 nanometers. I don't think that would have any effect on imaging because most commercial sensors are have would have very low quantum efficiency up there in that range so i wouldn't worry about it but i did find that it had a little ir bump out there all right here's the bader neodymium and then here is uh what mine looked like and it was incredibly close to to what they published and the only thing uh was that it cut off maybe a little bit uh, sooner than what they published, and I thought that the O3 transmission was actually a little bit higher than what they published. They said it would be around 85%, and I found it was more around 90%, which is good. Here's the published Astronomic CLS, and here's what I found. They said the notch uh, started at around 540 nanometers, and in my test, it, it looked like it started more like around 550 nanometers, but pretty close, close enough that uh, I'd say it's pretty accurate. And here's the SV Boney CLS. This is what they've published. And uh, just like the Astronomic CLS, the they said that the, the big notch would start at around 520 uh, nanometers, and my reading was about 10 nanometers off from that. It started around 530. And then on this one, uh, also where uh, the notch ended was also a little bit off. So my filters seem to have a slightly um, narrower notch than what was published, but that's perfectly uh, fine because um, it's still cutting out uh, most of that yellow spectrum um, that most light pollution filters are targeting. Uh, I should say that the, the Astronomix CLS is not an IR cut filter, so uh, keep that in mind if you're using a modified camera or an astronomy camera it does not block the ir but if you're using it with a dslr then that would that wouldn't matter and uh same thing with the sv boney um cls it's basically a very similar filter to the astronomic um, it doesn't block the ir uh, but it did seem to have lower ir transmission than the astronomic which was interesting okay let's jump into physical characteristics of these filters Starting with the Optolong L Pro, this is what the box looks like. And if you open it up, it comes with a nice transmission chart and a plain box for the filter. This is my preferred kind of filter box, it comes right out. Um, it is a two inch filter, as all the ones I'm reviewing are. It has minimal knurling on the top. Um, it measures five millimeters without the threads and about 6.8 millimeters with them. It does have the little notches on the inner filter ring. So if you do have a spanner like I do, you can take the filter apart and measure the actual glass filter inside. It measured about 45 millimeters across or 1.8 inches. Here's the Bader Moon and Sky Glow Neodymium. Uh, it has a nice packaging, but uh, I don't really like the, the wax paper thing that it comes in. Uh, I'd, I'd probably lose that, and then the filter just bangs around in the box. So not my favorite inside the package. Um, it has really nice knurling both on the sides and on the top. Again, 48 millimeter threads, two inch filter. It's the thickest of the filters that I reviewed at about 5.91 uh, millimeters without the threads and about 7.8 seven millimeters with the threads. Here's the Astronomic CLS. It's the only one that has the nice gold foil uh, quality sticker, so you know that it uh, hasn't been tampered. Here's the inside. It has the red foam insert, which is typical of Astronomic. I like this kind of box again. The Astronomic, like the L Pro, has minimal knurling just on the top. It is the thinnest of all the filters that I looked at, at 4.4 millimeters uh, above the filter threads, and 6.8 if you include them. 
Here's the SB Boney CLS box, very plain, very plain packaging all around. It seems to use the exact same filter mounting as the Optolong, so minimal knurling on the top, smooth finish around the edge. And it is about five millimeters above the threads and 6.7 millimeters with them. Okay, now let's jump into the actual real world tests, starting with Bortle 4 with a stock DSLR. And some of you may be wondering, why is test at Bortle 4? That's not light polluted. Well, to some people it is. Uh, if, you're, if you're used to very, very dark skies, then Bortle 4 actually does um, mean somewhat light polluted. Um, and so I just wanted to test under some different sky conditions to give you a feel for what these filters do uh, in a more sort of rural setting like B B Bortle 4, but then we'll also jump into a city setting, uh, Bortle 9, which is, is basically almost as, you know, about as light polluted as you can get, while Bortle 4 you can think of as, you know, is still a fairly nice night sky. You can, you can make out the Milky Way in the summer and uh, you can make out M31 naked eye. So here's what the North America and Pelican Nebulae looked like without any kind of filter and a stock Canon 5D Mark III. And here's that same scene with an Optolong L Pro. And then a Bader Neodymium Moon and Sky Glow. The Astronomic CLS. And finally, the SV Boney CLS. And now let's look at some crops. This is no filter on the Cygnus wall. This is the L Pro. This is the Bader Neodymium. This is the Astronomic CLS. And this is the SV Boney CLS. Okay, le next let's look at that same night I shot with an, a dedicated astronomy camera. A dedicated astronomy camera has no uh, IR cut filter, or this one doesn't have an IR cut filter built in. This is the QHY168C. So instead of going no filter in, and then comparing the rest, for my baseline image, I used uh, an Astronomic L2 UVIR cut filter. Um, but it still gives you an idea of, of without light pollution filters added, what to expect from this camera and these sky conditions. So here we go, same scene. It's a little bit cropped in because this is a crop sensor camera while the 5D was full frame. So here is with just the Astronomic L2. Here is with the Optolong L Pro. Here's with the Bader Neodymium. This is with the Astronomic CLS. And this is with the SV Boney CLS. And now let's look at some crops just at the Cygnus wall. Here's the Astronomic L2. Here's the Optolong L Pro. This is with the Bader Neodymium. Here's the Astronomic CLS. And finally, the SV Boney CLS. Okay, now I'm sure what a lot of you have been waiting for. Let's look at a really light polluted sky. This is from Somerville, Massachusetts, which is Bortle nine because it's right near Boston, meaning um, a very, you can, this is an actual picture of the sky, the night that I took these pictures and you can see that you can barely make out any stars. It's just sort of this uh, ugly gray purple color. Um, and so these pictures are not gonna be as pretty as the ones you just saw because uh, we're under much worse conditions. And the North America and Pelican Nebulae are challenging with a stock DSLR, meaning one that's not been modified under Bortle 9 skies. So this should really show the difference that we get with light, these light pollution filters. So here is no filter. This is the Optolong L Pro. This is the Bader Neodymium. This is the Astron Astronomic CLS. And finally, the SV Boney CLS. Let's look at some crops. Here's no filter on the Cygnus wall. This is the L Pro. This is the Bader. This is the Astronomic CLS. And this is the SV Boney CLS. 
Okay, and finally to wrap it up, let's look at the Bortle 9 with a dedicated astro camera. Here is with just the Stronomic L2, the Optolong L Pro, the Bader Neodymium, the Astronomic CLS, and the SV Boney CLS. And here's some crops. This is with the Astronomic L2. There's with the uh, Optolong L Pro, the Bader Neodymium, the Astronomic CLS, and the SV Boney CLS. Okay, to wrap it up, I'm gonna let you make your own judgment about these filters and what might work for you, but just to give you a little bit of what I thought, um, my feeling was if you do have a dedicated astro camera or a modified uh, DSLR and you're shooting under darkish skies like Bortle 4, then there's really no reason to get a light pollution filter. I thought that the Astronomic L2, which just cuts off the UV and the IR, but doesn't uh, mess with the rest of the visible spectrum, looked the best out of all of them. My second favorite would be the most gentle of the light pollution filters, which was the Bader Neodymium. My third favorite for, again, a dedicated astro camera or a modified DSLR was the uh, Optolong L Pro, but it is about $50 more expensive than the Bader Neodymium. And my least favorites were the CLS uh, because they were cutting out a lot of the light, so they, you, you ended up with noisier images and with worse star color. So I didn't really see any advantage to using those under uh, dark skies. When it comes to the Bortle 9 skies with the dedicated astronomy camera, I thought that they all did a fairly good job, and it's really just uh, up to personal preference. Um, but I would probably go with that same order that I said before. I'd stick with just the Astronomic L2, then the Bader, then the L Pro, and then the CLS filters. Now, my opinion is pretty different when it comes to the stock DSLR. Uh, with the stock DSLR, I found that both from Bortle 4 and Bortle 9, all of the filters were an improvement over no filter. Um, but my favorite um, under Bortle 4 was again the Bader Neodymium um, because it had it produced excellent star color and and uh, just as good a result in my opinion as the other filters in terms of the nebulosity. But under Bortle 9 skies, I thought that the CLS filters um, were probably more what people were going to look for in a light pollution filter and that they really boosted those red nebulae. Well, the, the Bader did the worst under Bortle 9 with a stock DSLR. It basically looked just slightly better than no filter, and no filter under Bortle 9 was really bad on these nebulae. So if you are under very heavy light pollution with a stock DSLR and you want to get a light pollution filter, I would recommend one of the CLS filters. They come in at slightly different price points, so if you're price sensitive, you could pick one over the other. But really, the CLS filters, I thought, did best with just a stock DSLR. But once you modify, I think going with either no filter, if you do an HA mod or uh, an astronomic L2 kind of filter, like a UVIR cut filter, uh, would be best if you are full spectrum. Okay, so hopefully that um, was helpful. And remember, you can go to astrofilters.com to see all of these images again and just look at uh, my reviews uh, in bulleted list format rather than as a video. Uh, and you can also uh, purchase some of these filters directly from that site through my OPT link um, or in the description. And again, I'll disclose that I do use OPT's affiliate program. So if you buy uh, one of these filters through my OPT link, uh, I will get a 3%, I think, um, three or 4%, something like that, uh, commission, but your price won't go up. Okay, this has been Nico Carver. My main website is nebulaphotos.com, and thank you very much 
Uh, I'm glad to have this review uh, off my back, but it's been fun and I hope to do more reviews in the future. Till next time, clear skies.